Let's wrap up our U substitution discussion with a tricky example. I like this one because if you can do this one, it really shows that you can think outside the box with U substitution. When you start this one, if you'd like, you can pause the video and see if you can do it yourself. But as we start, it looks really confusing because it doesn't really fit one of the forms we've dealt with. More specifically, we're looking at two pieces here, x and x plus 12, but neither one of them looks like the derivative of the other, which means that our typical approach kind of gets stuck immediately. It's hard to pick what to make u. But if we think down those lines, we have those two pieces, x and x plus 12. And it kind of makes sense to pick one of them to be u. Now, right away, you should see that if we just let u equal x, that does nothing for us. In other words, we're just replacing, we're renaming the variable x into u. And so we haven't simplified anything. So we're definitely not going to let u equal x because it just doesn't do anything for us. There's no problem with doing it, but it doesn't help us in any way whatsoever. So let's try the other one and see where it gets us. If we let u equal x plus 12, du is pretty easy. That's just 1, the derivative of x plus 12, times dx. So making the substitution starts out pretty easy. x plus 12 gets replaced with u, dx gets replaced with du, and everything looks good so far, except we have this lonely x that cannot be replaced. Or can it? See if you can figure out a way to replace that x with something in terms of u. And if you haven't seen it, look back here where we defined u. We said u equals x plus 12. How could we replace x with something in terms of u? Well, if we just solve for x, just like we've solved with dx before, we can replace x with u minus 12. Okay, let's try that. Now, at this point, you may be saying, great, we've just replaced one tricky problem with another one. In other words, it doesn't look like we've simplified greatly. It kind of looks like the same overall structure. But it turns out there's one small but crucial difference between the first line and the second line. In the first line, we were stuck. There wasn't any algebra we could do. But in the second line, we can actually split that fraction into two different fractions. We can actually split this up and write it as u over u minus 12 over u. So this is a really specific type that kind of works in this one way <clears throat> conveniently because originally there's nothing we can do to simplify, but if we do this clever substitution, it turns out that we can break up this fraction into two pieces. And each of those is something we can handle, right? The first one just simplifies to one, and then 12 over u we also know how to handle. The integral of one is just u. The integral of 12 over u is 12 times the natural log of u. And then when we re replace u with x, we just get x plus 12 minus 12 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 12 plus c. So I like to show that one just because it's a little bit quirky. It's kind of unusual. It's a very unique problem. But if you can do that one, it shows that you really understand u substitution, and you can even take it in surprising directions. I'm going to put some more examples at the end of these notes, and you should try those examples on your own. I'll put the answers afterward. And for any of them, if you don't understand the answer and how we got there, um, you should ask about it. But you should be able to go through and work all the examples that I post after this in the notes.